Now, welcome to GPCA TV and welcome to the 14th annual GPCA Forum. My name is Mark Thomas and I'm the Markets Editor for Chemical Week, which is owned by IHS Market. Uh, I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Heinrich Schoenfelder, who is President, Middle East and Africa for Evonik in the Gulf. Welcome, Hendrik. Hello, Mark. Uh, we've had a theme running throughout this event, uh, which has talked a lot about the importance of digitalization throughout every aspect of a company. I just wonder if from your perspective, how, how the company is really approaching that subject at the moment. And we're taking that very serious because of the disruptive forces that come along with it. And um, we may know that we have created a separate unit, a uh, legal entity on its own to uh, deal with these topics. And uh, there, there are two dimensions to it. On the one hand side, there are these efficiency gains that we expect from us. We will see a boost in efficiency in all aspects of the operations, uh, maybe logistics, uh, the supply chain, uh, the interface with the SAP system and production, uh, all of these matters, uh, all of these matters in terms of efficiency, but it will be something that everybody else does as well. So I do not expect a cutting edge from this. Cutting edge will come from the way how we are interpreting, how we are enhancing our customer relations. And there I see a big opportunity deploying artificial intelligence, in particular in regions like the Middle East and Africa that I'm in charge of, where reaching out to customers in person is sometimes very difficult. So we have programs in place to develop software that allows us to communicate with us interactively in a way as if our technical service person would be present, though we cannot because our client is in the middle of Mali. Um, and that has given me a lot of hope that we can bridge the physical distance to our customers more easily. And then on top, we have elements out there which are entirely new to us. Um, we would, for instance, take enormous data sets from the applications in our clients' operations. For instance, um, in uh, the uh, chicken farms of our customers, we're taking measurements of all sorts of levels, uh, the way they are having their digestion system, temperatures, uh, the mass that is accumulated at a certain moment in time, and derive from there the optimum way of how nutrients are fed to the flock. That is fascinating and uh, at the same time new to us and these new skills, uh, new mindsets and that's why we have created this separate unit to bring us forward. Uh, talking of disruptive, I don't know whether disruptive is perhaps the right word but something that is impacting every part of every company in this industry these days is the approach to sustainability. It's crucial to every company's strategy going forward. Um, again, what is Evanix's approach uh, to the subject of sustainability and circularity? Now, sustainability is at the heart of what we are doing. Um, we aim firmly uh, to create a systematic approach to serving all of the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals uh, in one way or the other. And already today, 80% of our products are supporting these goals. So I think we are on a pretty good track and we have ambitious targets to further reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. We want to cut them by 50% until the year 2025 from the 2008 basis. That is ambitious and we are making good progress there. It's not enough though, that's uh, very clear. Uh, we need to come to new products, new way we're looking at chemicals. Um, CO2, freedom, decarbonization of our industry. Well, that is a massive task. Um, um, some of our clients, or you may have heard of the Carbon II Chemistry Program in Germany, where we are seeking cooperation with all sort of different players, steel mill operators, utility companies, contractors, and chemical companies like BASF and us, Evonik, to jointly explore the opportunities to take CO2 out of industrial influence and turn them into high value chemicals. That is exciting. That is giving us a path forward into uh, CO2 neutrality that we're also targeting uh, one day or the other, uh, but it's a long way and needs a lot of effort, a lot of strength and a lot of good brains to work on that. Uh, but we are confident that we have good contributions to it. Now, there's certain industry headwinds at the moment, some uncertainty uh, out there in the market generally. Um, could you tell me a little bit about uh, Evonik's approach in terms of its portfolio, opportunities and perhaps uh, current um, just aspects of the business that the company is looking at 
and how it's really approaching this risk going forward. Yes. I mean, the chemical industry is basically used to go through cycles. Um, and uh, the further upstream in the value chain you are, the more pronounced these cycles are. Um, our strategy is to clearly become a specialty company with more focus on the specialty areas which are further downstream. By nature, those are less cyclical and are exposing us less. Already this year we see the effect of this, divesting some of our commodity type businesses are by, despite the headwinds we are feeling, probably delivering a result at the same level this year that we had the year before. That is a fantastic achievement through portfolio optimization. That will probably continue. Um, I think we would further go that route, have a little bit less of uh, the commodity business, more specialty business through further activities there. Um, however, it's also clear, in your portfolio, you need to have a proper balance. Um, a company that only consists of high growth, um, businesses that require a lot of capex, require a lot of investments, uh, you run out of cash if you invest all of your monies into those. So you need to have some elements, balancing elements in your portfolio to create the cash that you need to finance the growth areas. And we're hopeful that we get, to, get the right balance there. We're on a good track there already. A few more steps and I think we are best in class. Of course there are other risks you mentioned. Mm -hmm. ah, my goodness, I mean trade wars, Brexit, all of these matters, let's face it, it's beyond our control and uh, we need to accept our fate, that we are part of a global economy and uh, we're part of the club. Lastly, this event's theme throughout it has been that of the importance of partnerships, both existing ones and establishing new ones. Uh, could you just perhaps give me an insight into uh, Evonik's current sort of approach to partnerships and where it looks to collaborate going forward? Yeah, it is somehow in the nature of what we are doing as a specialty camera company that we have ingredients in the value chain which occupy a small space and have a pretty hefty influence on what other people do in that value chain. So by this it is in the DNA of our company to work very intensively with partners along the value chain. I also see that Operating in the chemical industry with a 150 years of background, we need to accept our fate that it's becoming more and more difficult to come up with the new next generation molecule that rocks the boat. So if we speak about innovation, success and in innovation, we very often speak about customer-oriented innovation. That means together with the customer finding new solutions which may not entail a new molecule but entail a whole concept of how we are embedding new molecules into new solutions. So from that perspective, working in partnerships is really in the DNA of what we are doing. Um, of course that helps us also in the financial arena and in other aspects of the supply chain which is more, more, a little bit more mechanical than a relationship to a, to a client to advance and to use our expertise. Okay, well, Hendrik, thank you very much for joining us today. Mark, my pleasure. Thank you.